Hey everybody, welcome to episode four of Golf News RI, the podcast. I'm Joe Calabro. Episode three featured Larry LaFauci. You can check that out on golfnewsri.com, where it'll be there for all, all of time. In episode four, we're so excited to have uh, Ryan Golf legend, uh, Charlie Blanchard. He's also the coach of the Bryant men's golf team. Uh, I know we had Angel McLeod on back in the fall, the women's golf team. We've obviously had ERI on Greg Burke. Uh, couple of times so excited to have charlie on charlie thanks so much for taking some time out of your your busy schedule and and joining us oh well thank you for having me i'm uh looking forward to it yeah uh just, so we're just trying to bring attention to i try to bring attention to, to college golf i think it's fascinating to follow uh they just announced that nick dunlap from alabama turned pro uh uh to after he just won the amex last year so kind of more successful college golf in general but uh talk about bryant uh, and as you guys start your spring schedule, you released it last week. We don't have to go through every single tournament, um, but some of the highlights were the obviously the Dorado Beach Collegiate, which you've been for the first time. The Carpet Bagger, which is always a big one, it feels like a big one. I think you are plays in that as well, and a couple of other ones before you get to the conference championship. But just talk about um, from your perspective the schedule this year. Again, you don't have to go tournament by tournament necessarily, but just talk about the, the schedule, the spring schedule this year for you guys and what you're kind of looking for or expecting. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, we were fortunate this year to, to be able to get into the, the one at Dorado Beach. You know, you, you, you almost can't turn that down. <laughs> um, you know, so it's, it's a great way to start off. You know, it'll be February early, so, um, you know, we won't have, obviously, have a lot of time out on the golf course, but, um, you know, guys are coming off the kind of winter break most of them went down south or you know for a little bit of time so you know we got maybe like a month you know before the next before that event so ho hopefully they'll be semi-sharp um we're fortunate we're going down there um they have a, a you know basically two practice rounds so um so hopefully we can get uh, get some feel back around the greens anyways and in, in those couple days um and then uh, you know three days of event and uh, you know so you know i'm, I'm hoping you know, I'm expecting us to play pretty solid down there. You know, a couple of the guys have seen the course already. Um, so which, which is, which is fortunate. You know, I got uh, um, two guys on the team that actually live down there in Dorado uh, and belong to the golf course. So that, you know, so in over Christmas break last year, or, or I guess uh, they had uh, guys stay with them. So they, they've seen the, seen the course. So it won't be brand new to them, be brand new to, uh, you know, a couple of the guys, but, you know, uh, ho hopefully that uh, familiarity will help. How how important will those two practice rounds be? Like you, I mean, you just mentioned how no one's no one's really seen the course, but how much stock will you put into those practice rounds uh, for a for that tournament or any other tournament, really? I and mean, how important yeah, so are those rounds? Yeah, so the the, the practice round is, uh, um, you know, it, it it's actually it's very important if you use it right, right? So. Um, you get to see the greens, uh, you know, you can hopefully pick out some target lines where, you know, and then how to approach these greens, where to hit it, where to be, you know, and then, uh, you know, I, I like to spend a little more time on the putting greens than, uh, than on the golf course, because, uh, you know, you can, you can save shots quicker around the green than you can from, you know, 180 yards. Um, so, you know, we try to spend a little more time and, you know, if you're lucky that they, they'll have uh, pin placements out there for the next two or three days. Uh, if not, you just kind of have to figure out where they may be. Just get a feel for, you know, speed and break. And, you know, especially down in Dorado, you know, the grass is going to be a little bit different than than up here. So you you got grain and everything else that's going to be involved. So, you know, hopefully we'll be able to take some take some good notes and, and you know, have a have a pretty good idea of, of you know, the, the, the greens and, and the breaks on them. For you, as a great player in yourself, like I said, like I said, you're uh... – a golf legend in Inner Island, numerous amateur tournament championships. Obviously, you turned pro since. How much of your experience do you use to help your team, to help the kids? You know, how how much is, of your experience do you kind of? Uh, yeah, I, give, I try to give, impart um, as much as I can. Um, you yeah. know, because I've I've made all those mistakes already, right? I mean, I've already I've already all the things that they do. You know. I, I don't want to say wrong, but, you know, like they make mental mistakes. I've already made them, you know, so, so I'm always trying to impart the, you know, you know, what I've learned over, you know, 40 years of, of golf, um, you know, to try to minimize their mistakes, you know, and, you know, how to attack with pins, not pin, you know, pins you can't, pins you can't, uh, you know, places to be on the greens from certain distances, 
um, you know, try to try to be more of a, you know, uh, um, you know, and, and the good thing about college golf is you can actually caddy for them. I can't carry their bag, but I can, I can walk with guys and, right. you know, talk about shots, what they hit, where to hit, you know, and I, and I always, tr- you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always letting them know, okay, here's, here's what I would do. You know, I would hit this, you know, because, you know, a lot of times the, the smarter safe play is the one to hit rather than trying to be too aggressive at times. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, if you got a distance and a pin you love, then you can be aggressive to a, to your spot, not to, not trying to say, trying to hold it out in the air, but I'm saying you, know, you, you got a spot on the green that you want to hit it, you know, cause the green breaks one direction or another, which, you know, which they don't understand. You know, I mean, like all, all the, you know, the younger kids, uh, you know, especially freshmen, sophomores, by the time they're juniors and seniors, hopefully they've, you know, they've, they've learned more, you know, so I can spend more time with the younger guys. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's very important. I think, you know, that's, that's one of the big benefits that, uh, that I can bring is, you know, like the, the course management knowledge and, and how to manage yourself around, especially when you're not hitting it good, right? When you're not hitting it good, you know, you know, most people can't play golf. You know, I mean, you, 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 everybody plays good when you hit it good, but when you hit it bad, you know, the, the, the scores are a million where, you know, when you're hitting it bad, that's when you have to really, you know, you got to go to one shot. Don't try to fix it and, you know, and, and just, you know, play comfortable shots and get yourself out of there and then work on it on the range later. What's well, interesting. You mentioned you can, you can walk with the guys and I know you have uh, Rick Angeli as your assistant now. Uh, he's been super supportive of us since we, we started. Uh, and, and I asked Greg Burke this when I had him on, uh, you know, how is he has uh, Brandon Gillis as his assistant, but how do you guys, how do you decide like who you're going to walk with? Is there like a strategy to it? Is it, you know, Rick, you take these kids, I'm going to walk with the freshmen. Is it just leave, let's leave Tyler alone and we'll focus on well, how, what's the strategy? Yeah, ex- exactly. Like? Yo, so, so we'll, you know, we'll kind of before the round say, okay, Hey, yo, like if, if it's you, usually if it's somebody's first tournament, I try not to go near them. Right. They're already nervous. Interesting. Right. They're already yeah. got pressure on them. You yeah. know, the, the odds, the odds of them playing good are probably slim anyways. <laughs> so I just let them get comfortable. And then maybe like day two or whatever, then then I'd walk with them and, and try to help them, um, you know. And the same thing with Rick, you know. And we'll pick and choose, you know. If if guys are playing good, we, you know, I stay away from them. I'm not gonna. What can I do? I can't help them, you know. I mean, you know, I got one or two guys lighting it up. What am I gonna do? Right? I can't, you know. I, I you know, I could just confuse the issue. So that you know, there's a lot of that too, where you, you know, you just stay away from certain guys if they're playing great. If if somebody's struggling, then then I'll go there and try to write the ship. You know, and, and the problem is, you know, because there's two of us and there's four, five guys playing, four goals, sc- scores count. So, you know, and sometimes, you know, if somebody is, is struggling, you can't get it, you know, you, you, you can't, you can't waste your time with, with that one person at that time, right? You can, you know, next round, we'll, we'll help them out or practice ra- or after, you know, hitting balls. But if, uh, you know, somebody's not playing well, you know, it's, you know, we'll spend our time with the other guys that we can help and try to get a good score in the house after round one and then. You know, then we can work on the other guy in between the next two rounds. This is your you joined the South End Conference in 2022. This is so you're about a year and a half ish or so. Obviously, for those that don't know, uh, the America East, which Bryant is a part of for the majority of the rest of their athletic programs, doesn't have golf. So the golf team goes to the South End Conference. What has that been like? I and mean, what's been the challenges, the adjustments to this point? I know you're only a year and a half, like I said, a year and a half or so in, but what is that? kind of experience been like to be in that conference yeah so so uh, obviously uh, you know the competition's deeper right there's a lot of, there's there's more teams that are you know better than you know like in the, in the nec you know there was there's probably like two teams two or three teams that were you know and there in the south end there's six you know that that are that all can play you know and, and i think it's it's good for us to push us um uh in that uh, in that conference. Uh, and, and I think, you know, we have the guys, I, I have, I have the guys that have the ability to play at that level. You know, if we, if we can put it all together, uh, all, all five guys together during that week, you know, uh, I think we got, we got a chance, you know, I mean, all my guys can shoot under par. They're all solid players. You know, it's just, you know, you need all five of them to, to show up. You know, we're not, we're not deep enough that, you know, two guys can, you know, have bad days and we'll be okay. You know, every, everybody's going to play solid. So that, that's kind of what, you know, once, once we get to um, the beginning of April, that's going to be really the focus on getting 
you know, the five or six guys that we think are going to conference really dialed in for uh, for the end of April. A couple of guys I just want to hit on. Um, Tyler Dupree, uh, obviously, is your star player. He went to the U.S. Uh, Junior Am last year, or this past summer, I guess. Uh, not, um, and then uh, uh, Rocco Biafor is a right on there, made his collegiate debut in the fall. And then Patrick Gallagher, who's a grad student. Um, and then and he, obviously a number of other players, Cole Hahn, Sam Hood, whatever. Uh, but talk, talk about what some of those guys mean, Tyler, especially to, to your roster, to your team uh, going into the spring. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, obviously Tyler's our, you know, you know, um, he, he's, he's our number one guy. He'll, uh, yeah. uh, he, he's, he's a great player. Um, he doesn't really know it, you know, <laughs> but he, I mean, you know, he, he gets in his own way sometimes, you know, when he's not, when he's not striping it, you know, like, like, you know, he struggles a little more than, than he should, you know, and, and I, and I'm saying like, you wouldn't know he's not striping it, but you know, he knows it. And then he tries to fiddle with it. Right. Instead of, instead of mm-hmm. just getting around, but you know, I, I've, I've talked to Tyler and, you know, I mean, there's no way he should ever, you know, I mean, 74 should be a bad score for him no matter what, you know, so, and, I, and I got a couple guys, you know, you got, uh, um, you know, like Kale Cohen, like he's a, he's a sleeper. Like he, you know, He's got the he's got a great mindset from you know from you know the, the being a great hockey player you know he's he's mentally tough um, another guy that can can light it up and take it low um, you know so, and then I get we got a transfer there Dylan Gallagher from from uh, uh, from New York I went to FNM and uh, I mean he's had some great rounds so you know I, and then obviously we got Patrick Gallagher you know fifth year senior you know and, and he's he's kind of he's a guy that's solid you know he, you know. He, very rarely shoots a bad number, you know, and, and he's always, he's always consistent, you know, so we got four guys that are really, you know, right there. And then, you know, the, the, the kind of the next three guys on the mix is, is Aiden Azevedo, you know, had a great, you know, played great this fall, uh, should have won the uh, Connecticut cup. Um, you know, he, he just had an unfortunate on, on his second to last hole, right. He, he, he just, you know, one bad swing cost him the, cost him the event. But uh, you know, there's a you know a kid that had a great high school career. You know, now he's starting to come into his own. Right, he's getting a little more comfortable. And that's the that's the thing. When you come in as a freshman, you know, it's hard. You get all these distractions, right? So some of them can handle it. Some of them focus on uh, you know golf and academics. And the ones that you know, try to focus on golf, academics, and a social life, they struggle, right? They have they have more struggling than than the the guys that you know keep keep golf focused. Um, you know, and and you know, obviously, you know, Aiden this year has, has played some great golf for us. Um, and then you got, you know, Cole Hahn, you know, another great player out of, out of Connecticut that, uh, you know, I tell him all the time, I said, there's no way with that golf swing he has, he should be shooting 75. You know, I mean, he, I mean, he's got tremendous club head speed, you know, hits it great. You know, same thing, just, you know, there's just that mental aspect of golf of learning how to control it, how to manage your game, um, you know, and that's, you know, that's what he's working on this, you know, this spring, you know, and he, he should be a big contributor to us. And like you said, Rocco Beaufort, right. You know, a great high school player out of Rhode Island. Uh, he works as hard or harder than anybody, you know, he's in, actually he's hitting balls right now in the, in the, uh, in the indoor bay. Um, you know, he calls me every day. Hey, you know, come hit balls. Can I hit balls? But that's, that's what you need. Those are, those are the guys that get better. Right. And, and you see that in college golf at any program, right. Some of them really work at it. And some of them want to work at it, but they get too many things pulling themselves away from golf, right? And that's you know, and but it, it is what it is, right? That's life, you know. So uh, you know, so th- those are kind of the core guys we have right now that uh, are going to be playing in the first couple events, and then uh, you know we'll we'll, we'll reassess after uh, Daytona there in the middle of March and try to figure out who uh, who are the five or six guys that we're going to take the conference to, to give us our best chance. Couple more things, then I'll let you, I'll let you go if that's all right. Uh, for you personally, for your own golf, uh, I know you're obviously focused on coaching now. But what's coming up for you? Are you still playing competitively? Do you have tournaments scheduled, or what's kind of the the Charlie Blanchard golf schedule coming up? Uh, well, I'll uh, obviously I'll try to qualify for the U.S. Senior Open, um, yeah. and then I'll, I'll I, I would try hopefully try maybe one or two senior tour events. Um, probably try the direct dicks up in upstate New York again. Um, you know, and then I'll play like the Rhode Island open senior open, 
the Connecticut Senior Open, Connecticut PGA, Senior PGA. Um, you know, because I, I don't I don't practice and hit balls anymore. So, you know, trying to compete with the college kids is is a little more difficult since I don't don't hit balls. But uh, you know, with the uh, guys my age, I could I could still uh, I can still do pretty well with against those guys. <laughs> and then and then lastly, um, you're in a unique position to to talk about this because you've done it all. You know, you've seen it all from all different levels. But uh, I'm always interested in the state of the state of golf in Rhode Island, as far as, you know, junior golf, you know, amateur level stuff, um, pros and to some degree, we've had so many kids now turning pro, whether it's Patrick Welsh or Davis Chatfield, Andrew O'Leary, Susie Cavanaugh, uh, the, the list goes on. We've had kids going to play division one or not even division one, just college golf in general, whether it's at URI, Bryant, elsewhere, um, like uh, Harry Dessel, Lafayette and, and more coming. Uh, for sure, hopefully. Um, but the state, the state of golf in Rhode Island. When you see, it, when you look at it, and again, you have a unique perspective on it. Um, what, what, do, what do you see? I mean, is this? Are we in a in a, in a crazy time? Is this? Uh, I mean, it's a, a great time for sure. But what, what do you see about the state of golf in Rhode Island with all these things? Yeah, going I, I think I think ever since COVID, it kind of exploded again. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, golf courses. Some golf courses closed, but. You know, the golf courses are, are fairly busy, right? They're fairly full. Um, yep. You know, I think, you know, Dave Adam Otis with the Challenge Cup does a phenomenal job with the with the junior events and for, for the young kids. Uh, you know, and, that, and that's how they get experience. And that's why you have all those guys that are turning pro, the Patrick Wells, the Davis Chappie, you know, the Andrew Lee. They, they all played on that Challenge Cup, right? So you're playing against the best kids in New England. And, you know, they're, they're pushing themselves. Like I, mean, like I always tell a story about Davis. Like I used to go – Back when I was playing, I'd go hit balls at six o'clock in the morning and I'd go to work at 730 or whatever it was I leave. And after I hit my ball and every day I was there hitting balls, Davis was there. And then I, after work, I'd go back and I'd play. And who was there? Davis was there. So Davis would spend 12 hours, 16 hours at the golf course every day in the summertime. You know, and I, and I, I just said, you know, that kid's going to be good. You know, you, 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 the, the work ethic, you know, you, you know, as, as, uh, uh, Arnold Palmer says it's in the dirt, right? I mean, you 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 grind it, you work, you work, you work, and you're gonna get better, right? I mean, he work, puts that much time in, he's he's gonna get better than everybody else, you know. And that's you know, and that's what it takes, and that's what the all the great ones do. You put, you know, you put the time in, you 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 spend eight, twelve hours a day. I mean, you know, you, you can't not get better, you know. And that's you know, and and you know, hopefully. You know, with a lot of these younger kids coming up, they're they're, they're seeing that, and they you know they want to follow in their footpaths. You know, they want to try to play Division One golf. They want to try to play on the PGA Tour, and uh, you know, you, you don't get there without the work ethic. And how how important is it? Because um, I said this at the time when they all started turn pro, uh, as I wrote like an editorial kind of thing about it. Uh, but how important is it for them to to kind of keep going to show that hey you can you can get to the pros from around because years ago that probably wasn't a thing it didn't seem you had, it felt like you had to move and you had to go live in Florida maybe in some ways you still have to maybe go down there and play but I feel like it's important and like I said I wrote about it I wrote it uh, that's important for them to keep pushing forward to show that there is a path to the pros if you want to do it I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, to to get there from Rhode Island, I think that's pretty pretty unique. Yeah, I mean, you know, absolutely. I mean, you, you had like you know, early on, you had Faxon and Andre and all, you know all those all those guys like Quigley. You know, yeah. I mean, they made it out of Rhode Island, and then uh, you know now you got this next group of a group of guys going, you know, being able to make it. You know, and and I think you know if, if you're from the South, right, and you're playing always in decent weather, you know, up here it's hard, right? You you play you, you like like today if the golf course was clean guy, guy, guys would be out there playing right you, you have mm -hmm. 38 degrees or whatever it is the wind's howling it's freezing right and, and you're getting the ball in the hole right? you, you learn how to play in adverse conditions right i mean if you're only hitting in you know beautiful days no wind i mean the, you know that's not hard you know it's when it's when it's blowing 30 and it's you know 48 degrees out and you can't feel your hands that's that's when you that, you know that's when that mental toughness kicks in and i think that that helps these guys you know the the being able to play in these elements, right? Because you've used to it. And then you see it again, you, you know, you're not whining about it. You know, where all the other guys are, oh, it's too cold. Right? That's why I always say, when you go to an event, 
you know, I, I just, you know, guys I whine about, I just push them over the edge. Yeah, you're right. Oh, it's awful out here, right? You know, right. There's one guy I don't have to worry about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just help them. Yeah, <laughs> hey, they want to whine about them. Yeah, you, yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking some time. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be following Bryant Golf this spring, starting in late February down at uh, Dorado Beach Collegiate. Charlie Blanchard, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time. Uh, thanks for having me. I, I look forward to the next time. Absolutely. This has been Golf News Radio, the podcast, episode four. I'm Joe Clabro. Hope everyone has a great rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.